All right, so this is going to be our library 101 session on what makes a good source. Um, how can you really tell what kind of sources you should be using in your papers or in your projects? Uh, it can be a little bit overwhelming, especially between everything that's available online and everything that's available through the library. So hopefully this will help you have a better idea of the questions you should be asking about the sources that you do find. So the first thing that I will talk about is peer reviewed sources, just because those are a lot of the types of sources that we have available through the library. And it's one of the advantages of using the library is uh, the access that we have to peer reviewed sources. So those are going to be scholarly sources that um, have not only been written by subject experts, so people who have credentials, degrees in the field. Um, they're also going to be sources that were reviewed by other subject experts. So you've probably, if you've ever been in an English class or SDV, you've probably heard us talking about peer reviewed sources and just that being really the preferred type of source to use um, for papers, uh, especially academic papers. So I am going to pull up the library's website, which is lfcc.edu slash library. And you can find peer reviewed sources both in the catalog and in the databases, but the databases makes it a little bit easier to find them because peer reviewed sources do tend to be um, Articles that we're talking about articles coming from academic journals and coming from scholarly journals. So when I go into a database like academic search complete And perform my search so that I can pull up some articles. So I'm just going to plug in the keywords I've been using today, which are minimum wage and increase and hours, just to give me some articles to work with. Uh, so you'll see in the list here, this little icon on the side that says academic journal, that's going to be your peer reviewed journals. Um, when you see the icon where it says periodical, that means sources basically that are not peer reviewed, that are going to be coming from magazines and coming from newspapers and sometimes journals as well. There are journals out there that are not peer reviewed journals. Uh, but when you're using the databases, it does make it a lot easier because you can basically click this little checkbox on the side just to limit all of your results to peer reviewed. So that's kind of the quick way of getting yourself to the most trustworthy results is by limiting with that filter on the side. Um, it's not to say that you always have to use it depending on um, what kind of paper you're writing. If you are writing a paper that is one that your professor is open to using popular sources like magazines and newspapers, but um, we generally recommend it from the library side of things. We're a big fan of peer reviewed sources, so. So that's one way to kind of get an idea of uh, what we like to call good sources. But uh, another really important question to be asking yourself is the currency of the sources, because uh, you can have peer reviewed sources, which makes them more reliable, but they couldn't possibly be peer reviewed sources that are older articles. So they might come um, from 20 years ago, 30 years ago. So you want to really make sure that the majority of sources that you're using for your paper are going to be articles that are published, I would say within the last five to 10 years, generally, um, especially if you're focusing on a topic that is one that changes quite a lot. And you know, the conversation around a topic like minimum wage, for example, is one that has changed because you have areas that are implementing policies involving minimum wage. So something that caught published 10 years ago might have come to very different um, conclusions than something that might have come out very recently because there was more to uh, study and more to um, kind of look at and make observations about. So when you're using the databases, you can also also use the publication date filter here on the side. And um, you can see whatever date it's showing on the left hand side means that's the oldest uh, date of the articles that you're going to find in the results. So there's an article at least from 1971 in the search results. So if I want to limit it a little bit more to say the last 10 years, I can put in 2010 and it will update my results to only be from the last 10 years. And I should um, I always like to give the caveat of it's okay to use older articles uh, in depending on how you use them. If you're kind of showing like 
this is what the situation was or the conversation around minimum wage. This is what it looked like uh, 20 years ago. It's okay then to use an article from like 2000 if you're trying to prove that point, but you just wanna make sure that that's not the only article that you have um, to make your point because there's a lot of information you've probably missed then in the last 20 years that that article just didn't catch. So another thing that you want to pay close attention to is relevance. So depending on um, the question that you're asking, some of the articles that you find may or may not directly answer that. Um, that's one of the tricks that people have with the databases sometimes is if I have a topic like I'm looking at minimum wage uh, increases and what impact it might have on like employee hours, like are they having their hours reduced, for example. Um, sometimes I might get articles that come up that really are not addressed that or say um, articles like this one at the top that are very specific to China or the next one down there is Ecuador. It's, it's not to say that it might not be useful to use those articles, but if I'm really trying to make the argument specifically about uh, minimum wage in the United States, they might not be as relevant to making the points depending on how those things have been implemented differently. The countries could be very different. So it might not be fair for me to use an article from a different country to try and prove a point um, for the United States. So you really want to make sure that it's actually answering your specific question. And you also want to make sure um, if it's scholarly and you're writing an academic paper, then it really is uh, relevant for your research. But if you're using, say, an article from a newspaper uh, for an academic paper, I wouldn't say that it's as relevant. Um, you really wanna make sure that the types of sources that you're using are appropriate for the kind of uh, research that you're trying to do. So that's another thing to pay attention to as far as the relevance of what sources that you're pulling up. So I want to talk about uh, authority, accuracy, and purpose as well, but I'm actually going to pull up the library catalog. Um, I focus a lot on the databases because they have peer-reviewed articles and they have popular, but sometimes um, students also have questions about the books that they're finding. So for example, if I do a search in the catalog for minimum wage to see what kind of books we have, because I want to talk about a little bit um, about authority as far as books as well as articles. So with articles, it's kind of when we talk about peer reviewed articles, there's the implication that the person writing because they're a subject expert would be more authoritative than a journalist because someone who is a subject expert means they have you know, multiple years of study done in that specific area. They, um, you know, have degrees in it. They are performing original research, whereas journalists tend to have lots of different topics they write about, and they don't usually focus on just one. Um, with books, it can be a little bit trickier because it's not, they're not peer reviewed. And so it's hard sometimes to tell if someone's a subject expert or not. So one of the things that I recommend doing um, is really, let me see if I can find a good example here. Okay, so for one example, you have the fight for 15, the right wage for a working America. Um, so this is a book about minimum wage. It's um, published by the new, new Press, which I'm not super familiar with. It doesn't sound necessarily like an academic um, publishing uh, pub publisher. So I have some question about the author behind it. So I can see that the author is David Rolfe. So I'm going to just do a quick Google search for his name. Okay, and it says that he is known internationally as an innovative labor leader and thinker on the future of work and labor. Uh, he's a leading architect of the historic fights to win a $15 living wage um, in Seattle. So that kind of goes with what I'm seeing here as far as the fight for 15. Um, so this is where it gets a little bit tricky sometimes when you're talking about authority, because I would say that this is someone who has uh, authority as someone who's obviously been very involved in the area that we're looking at, we're talking about minimum wage, um, but because he is specifically kind of involved um, from the labor side and he is, uh, it looks like he's very policy oriented, like he's working to implement these policies that might call into question um, the last point I have on here, which is purpose. Um, and that's kind of why was something written? Who's the audience? Is there a potential bias there or an agenda there? And so that's where sometimes it can get tricky because you have someone who I would consider to be a subject expert, 
but because they're very involved in kind of the politics of the issue, um, it might make it tricky to kind of separate them from the uh, agenda that they might have, which, you know, that wrong or right, like, they still probably do have an, a, a, an agenda. And so it makes it tricky when you're reading books by them because they will probably have a very specific point of view that they're trying to present um, and argue for. So if you look down at this book, The Living Wage Lessons from the History of Economic Thoughts, um, this comes from Edward Elgar Publishing, which I'm not super familiar with, but I am gonna go ahead and copy his name and do a search for his. So we've got Donald Stabil, um, and you can see here that I can pull up his bio and see that he's professor of the College of Economics. Um, it looks like he's a faculty member. He has been for, um, I guess it would be 40 years. Um, and you can see that these are his areas of research specialization, um, it's education. I'm trying to see if they even have a list. Sometimes the list like, um, their publications and scholarship that they've put out. I don't see that right off the top of here. Uh, I could probably do a search in the databases to see if he has other publications. Obviously he's written a book on the topic. Um, so that's kind of where I might give a little bit more authority to him as far as um, when you're looking at purpose, because as a faculty member, this is obviously an area of research for him. It's um, an area that he's studying and he might not necessarily be as involved um, say in the politics of the issue. So there could be a lot in the right, uh, the fight for 15 that is accurate. Um, and I would be interested in going into the book and trying to find any studies that the author might reference that I can go and look at myself. Um, but I would give a little more um, authority and, and less concern for potential bias to a book that's coming out, um, you know, from someone who's an academic that the title kind of gives you a sense that it's not necessarily got a, a specific point of view to it. Um, so that's one of the things you have to kind of look out for and be careful for. And you can find peer reviewed articles uh, sometimes that do have an agenda, um, like is raising the minimum wage a good idea, evidence and implications for social work. Um, that, you know, could be a good one. It's coming from a peer reviewed article. I can pull it up and, and take a look at it. And it's always really good to pay attention to like the introduction and the conclusions. But you can see here, you've got arguments for evidence suggesting caution. So it seems like it's taking a fairly balanced approach to the issue. Um, but you know, when I get to the end here, I can look at the conclusion it, and it does say social workers and allies should work for higher minimum wage. So it does have still a little bit of a perspective, even being peer reviewed, um, because it's published in this work for um, the publication of social work. Um, they might have a little bit more of an activist uh, agenda, but um, the fact that they are presenting both sides and um, pre presenting a lot of studies, I can see the citations here. I can see the recommendations that they have. Um, that one I would, I would feel maybe even a little bit more open-minded about, even though um, it seems like they might have a, a perspective in their conclusion, knowing that it's peer reviewed and that other people looked at it and approved of the conclusions that it came to, and that I can see that they're kind of presenting both sides, uh, makes me feel a little bit more comfortable using it as a source. So that kind of goes both into authority and purpose, paying attention to who's publishing it, who they are, doing a Google search on them potentially, and kind of trying to find out, um, you know, is there any reason I might question um, that they have a, an agenda? And again, it's not wrong to have an agenda. It's just whenever someone has a specific agenda on a source, I always kind of question potentially what um, sources that contradict them that might be left out because it might weaken their argument. Um, I mean, I think we've all written papers where maybe we've left out certain sources because we're afraid it's going to undermine the argument that we're trying to make. So we have to take that same care with the sources that we're finding that we might cite in our own papers. And then the last one is accuracy, and that can be a little bit tricky. Um, you know, we're not subject experts on a topic, so it makes it hard sometimes to tell if, you know, this article that I found or these books that I found, if what they're presenting is true or accurate. And peer-reviewed sources, sometimes you can find two peer-reviewed sources that say completely different things. Um, and that's because, you know, the science is always evolving. And sometimes there are studies that are done that will find examples of how it, uh, something 
is uh, true or that there is evidence for it in this direction. And then another study will be done that might show evidence in the other direction. And the best recommendation I can give for you guys is that as you're doing uh, research in the databases or doing searches in the catalog, the more sources you can find that back up um, one particular conclusion that someone's coming to. Um, and that's why it's really good to pay attention to the citations that they're using. If they're showing you that there's other studies that were done that came to the same conclusions, um, that's always a really good sign. Um, and especially if they're all newer stuff, like make sure that the age on the articles shows that it's um, still showing that they're coming to the same conclusions. It's not like, oh, there was one person who found it 20 years ago um, and things have changed a lot since then potentially. So um, that's kind of the best suggestion I can give is pay attention that they've got citations, that they're giving you evidence that actually proves what they're saying is true. And then they're not just citing things and none of those sources actually prove their point. Um, and then the more sources that you can find that come to the same conclusion, um, I always say the more consensus that you see on a topic is a good, good sign that they might um, have come to the right conclusion then. So those are the best uh, recommendations that I can give you as far as things to look for when you're evaluating sources, how to tell what's a good source. Peer reviewed is definitely um, a good thing to look for, but you still should make sure to kind of look critically at the other questions as far as like the purpose, the authority, um, you know, the currency of them and make sure that it still measures up with all of those because peer reviewed is not always a promise that it's 100% uh, accurate. You still need to make sure that it makes sense um, from, you know, what you're seeing uh, with the criteria that I've talked about today. So, so that is basically all I was going to cover for you guys.